Hello. Herein is a brief paper I've written regarding brainwaves. Without further ado, beta, alpha, theta, delta, and shh, gamma. These are the names given to define the electrical brain waves detected from the brain utilizing modern technology. The human brain has an estimated 80 to over 100 billion neurons, dude. <laughs> and each of these neurons has a reported 100,000 connections, also known as synapses. That, my friend, that's a supercomputer. Before getting ahead of myself in studying these brain waves, I'll start with defining a wavelength. To break it down, Barney, simple, a wavelength, it's just that. It's the length of a wave from peak trough to peak, the top to the top. That is a wave's length. Moving along, frequency. Frequency is simply defined as the number of waves in a given amount of time. Well, the greater the neurons fire in rhythm, naturally the higher the frequency of the waves. The stronger the neuron fires in its energy, the higher the wave's amplitude, its height. Measured using hertz, one cycles per second, brain waves can now be defined from high to low. The numbers beta, <laughs> the numbers Let's start again. Beta, alpha, theta, delta, and shh, gamma. Starting with beta. Beta, these are in the 12 to 40 hertz range. They're associated with alertness to hyperactivity. They require focus of the mind. Their patient will be attentive, involved in their surroundings. They're recorded in athletes out on the field. You'll see it in the fight or flight response of the sympathetic nervous system. The mind is in its peak performance. Uh, you'll see public speaking or even maybe encountering an emotional response to an event. Uh, these are all beta wavelengths. Another thing of side note is of interest is have you ever walked into a grocery store and you'll Notice there are people inside the grocery store who immediately they pick up a shopping cart and their head is on a swivel and they are just picking up everything in sight and impulsively placing it in their shopping cart. That is a beta wave response in the patient. Proceeding forward, alpha. Alpha waves, these are a little bit slow down from those beta waves. Alpha waves are in the range of 12 hertz to 8 hertz. They're associated with a more relaxed state of mind, a more, more balanced state of mind, um, where one is neither super alert nor fatigued. There is even a light detachment from their surroundings. Um, the alpha waves are common after accomplishing an important task. You'll see alpha waves in the break room after one on their break. Um, maybe someone they're taking a nice walk. Um, those are alpha waves. When one can simply sit and mull over an idea, scratch their chin, so to speak, decompression, that's an alpha wavelength. Proceeding forward, theta. Theta wavelengths are on the range of 8 hertz to 4 hertz. Theta waves, of course, they're slower than the alpha waves. It's when one is in their groove. So I've heard it called tranquilo or tranquil. It's a uh, sense of when one is performing a repetitive task, daily routines such as, oh, your shit shower shave, your workout, your commute to work, your, your common running errands, 
theta waves, these are a calming, a sense of familiarity. Uh, when one is drifting into a lower state of mind, onto even daydreaming, or even meditating, napping, theta wavelengths, these are instinctual and they're really intuitive in nature. Some of the most creative ideas emerge during a theta state of mind. Theta waves afford a patient a greater sense of calm and are often seen before light sleeping. Proceeding forward, delta. Delta wavelengths, these are slow. When I said tranquillo earlier, meaning tranquil, like these ones are all like real slowed down. Delta wavelengths are usually signified and seen in an unconscious patient. Um, the reduced brain activity allows both the brain and the body to heal, especially beneficial in restorative and healing properties that the body has naturally. Delta waves are slow, calming, and they're detected in very deep meditative states. We're talking those people sitting in the lotus position, uh, like, you know, meditating, really deep sleep uh, meditation. And now for the final, gamma. Gamma wavelengths, these are seen in extraordinarily high spikes along an electroencephalogram. You know those squiggly lines on a piece of paper you may have seen in, say, the, a movie? Well, these gamma wavelengths are on the range of 40 to greater than 100 hertz. They are a high energy state when concentration is at its absolute pinnacle um, during sleeping, lucid sleeping particularly, like those very active dreams we may have when you're flying or you're solving a problem. Um, another note is gamma wavelengths are seen in epilepsy patients. It's unique and it's still a mystery in the neurological community. Um, I want to note that uh, Although extremely rare, gamma wavelengths have been documented along the full spectrum of brain's activity in everybody's day-to-day -day life. Now, what that means is that no particular wavelength is absent when another is dominant. All of these are interwoven. Beta, alpha, theta, delta, and yes, even gamma. So utilizing tools such as the electroencephalogram, researchers are just beginning to learn the intricacies and vast mysteries of the human mind. I hope that you too can concentrate your brain waves on this fascinating topic as the human mind it remains the least understood organ in the human body. Well, my name is John Knott. I served as a soldier medic, United States Army. I have treated many patients with brain injuries, and that's where I first whet my appetite on the topic of this. And it really struck home for me was when I myself suffered a traumatic brain injury and was diagnosed with epilepsy in the year 2009. Well, without further ado, thank you. I really appreciate your time. This is Highlander Medic, signing out. Cheers.